One thing I've noticed over the years is that it feels like the time of year definitely has an effect on my anxiety levels. And to simplify it, for me it seems like in the winter my anxiety tends to be worse when the days start getting shorter. But there is some things with the summer, for example, the heat definitely makes my anxiety worse. But overall, it feels like my actual mood is affected more in the winter months, especially around the times of daylight savings time, which we've just had yesterday. And if I remember back to my uni years when I was living in Brighton, and this is before I became agoraphobic or had panic disorder, I noticed that every single day, especially around winter time, when it would hit four o'clock, that's when my anxiety would suddenly skyrocket. And one thing that I would do is I, was all, I would always text my dad and I would say, hey, I'm feeling anxious or I'm scared. And that was a little bit of a bad habit in itself, but it's important because one thing that my dad did was he realized, he said, I remember I, I told him that I was feeling anxious and you know, I didn't know what to do. And he texted me, oh yeah, look, it must be four o'clock. And I was like, what? And he was like, you text me every single day at four o'clock. And I was like, what's the... I was just sitting at home. There's no reason why suddenly my anxiety should spike at four o'clock, but it did. And I realized that, okay, hey, this is, seems to be when the, when the sun is, is going down. Like that was when, that was about the time of sunset. And there's been other times, a couple of years ago, I noticed that just before the clocks changed, I noticed it were getting darker earlier and I just, and I just felt way more anxious all the time. I couldn't put my finger on it at the time, but I was just like, I, I, don't, do, I don't feel right. I get a more depersonalized, more depersonalization, more derealization. It just feels weird. And then I realized that we were at that time of year when it's really obvious that things are changing. Anyway, so I've found a few articles that I want to share all about this sunset anxiety and seasonal anxiety. And I wanna go through them and see if there's anything we can find out together that might help. And also tell you some of the things that I actually do that have helped me. So before I start sharing this, the number one thing that I've done that has helped me with this seasonal change is taking fish oil, like cod liver oil, with vitamin D in it, right? This, I don't know who suggested it to me, maybe a therapist at one point, but as soon as I started taking this regularly, that impact that that change of year had on me is so much less. So now for me, as soon as I realize, okay, it's coming up to that change of year, the days are starting to get shorter, I go to the store and I get this cod liver oil. I don't take it in summer because I, I think I get enough sunlight, I get enough vitamin D, but when winter's coming, I take it religiously every day and I truly believe it helps me. So that's just one thing that I'm just going to get straight out there. This is something that I believe really helps me and I, I get the liquid version and I'm not going to lie, I kind of like it. <laughs> but you know, this is not a sponsored thing so go do, do your research, find a brand that maybe is, is good for your area, make sure it's high quality. But it's very interesting because if you look at countries that have a lot of that don't, don't have a lot of light, they actually need to take stuff like this because there are health implications from not getting enough sunlight, not getting enough vitamin D, not seeing enough sight, sunlight in the morning. That can really affect your mood and, and there are physical impacts as well. But let's have a look. So I've got an article here. I'll share my screen. Um, So check this out. Sunset anxiety is a real thing. Here's why you might feel uneasy as daylight fades. I think everyone who's not a hater can agree that sunsets are an objectively beautiful thing. Sometimes I find that fading daylight doesn't fill me with all gratitude and instead triggers a hard to place emotion that mixes grief, uneasiness and dread. So I call this troubled feeling sunset anxiety, and it turns out I'm not the only one who deals with it. So ex exactly, that is exactly the, the way I describe it. It's almost as if, and I've been noticing this now, which triggered me to go to the store and like, oh, okay, it's time to get my cold liver oil. I was just, 
was just feeling more eerie, more kind of like the world sucks. Just sadness. And I'll point this out as well. So I think what we're talking about here, a lot of people will refer to as seasonal affective disorder, or some people call it seasonal depression. And, and the focus on this is oftentimes when you read about it, focused on the depression side. And I think that, you know, that's definitely a big thing. But for me, I don't particularly deal with depression. And I think that this will have an effect on anxiety levels as well. So I might not feel more depressed, but I definitely feel more anxious, which can affect my mood. Turns out I'm not the only one who deals with it. At least a handful of other people on the internet read it. <laughs> if you have anxiety, stay off Reddit. If you have health anxiety, stay off Reddit. Support groups, things like that are not going to help you. I used to be in health anxiety support groups. I used to be in Reddit things. It literally is an echo chamber of people triggering each other and scaring each other and doing really unhealthy behaviors like seeking reassurance. Oh, does anyone else have this? Does anyone else have this? So first of all, doing that is bad for anxiety because you're not supposed to, do, to ask, oh, does anyone have this? That's again, kind of reassurance thing. But also that's just triggering someone else and giving them something else to worry about. So don't join health anxiety groups. I do have a Facebook group, but there are like strict rules where you're not allowed to do that. Seem to experience a spike in restlessness as the sun goes down. Interesting. I don't really get the restlessness part. The anxiety is filled with people who report feeling panicky. I get that. Empty, regretful, or guilty as day transitions to night. While the specifics are different for everyone, there's an overarching sense of loss of both of time and control. While it's bright outside, the day has potential. When sunset hits, it all comes crashing down. Okay, so, yeah, it's so true. So, I don't know why, and I think, especially here, they're talking specifically about as the sun sets. For me, I think it's, it's even, it's kind of overall, like I just overall feel different, but at the same time, it amplifies as, as the sun goes down. And it feels weird, like it's going down early. It's like life is being sucked out. And I know that one of the things that you should do if you deal with this is get sunlight, get as much sunlight you as you can in the morning. And actually I have a device that my dad got for me when I was really, really bad. And, and it was winter and I was just re really having like severe anxiety. And it's called a sad light. And basically it's, it's a light that you shine in your eyes or use it for half an hour at like 6 a.m. every morning. And it's to make up for the sunlight that's lost that, we, that you would get in the summer because you have, the sun is out that much but it kind of makes, makes up for that. And I think the mechanism, I think, you know, seeing sunlight stimulates the production of melatonin, which is what helps you to sleep and regulates your circadian rhythm. So let's fact check that actually. A sad light known as a light therapy box works by simulating sunlight to help treat seasonal affective disorder. So it mimics sunlight. Yeah, so kind of what I said, but it changes brain chemicals. Okay, so yeah, this is why right, it's important to fact check. So how it works is, it simulates the sunlight, making up for that missed sunlight during winter that we would get in the summer, and it changes your brain chemicals by reducing melatonin and increasing serotonin. I actually have a, a sad light, so let me show you. This is my sad light. It needs to be charged, it's not charged, but basically when you turn this on, it'll shine the light directly into my eyes. I'll try and get some footage of it. I need to charge it, so I'll do that later and like overlay on the video. But I can't tell you if this works or not because I haven't used it enough or long enough sustainably. I think at the time when I, when I was really using it, I didn't fully commit because I was in such a bad place. That's another thing, it's hard to fully commit when you're already suffering, if that makes sense. But, as I said, I've told you the one thing that has helped me the most, that I believe has helped me. It could be placebo, but again, the cod liver oil, I'll, I'll, I'll always say, number one, cod liver oil with vitamin D in it. So, sunset anxiety is far from official diagnosis. Yeah, things like eye functioning anxiety, sunset anxiety, none of these are like official diagnosis is nor is there much research on it there definitely should be more research because i do believe that this has a massive effect and so many people talk about having the same symptoms so we definitely need to do more research into that
everyone's anxiety is universal but all also very unique to them. If sunset anxiety strikes a chord for you, hopefully just knowing that others feel the same is a bit of a relief. That's the thing that we found in this whole anxiety fitness community is just knowing that other people deal with the same thing and being able to share our stories and help each other. I mean, that's exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm just telling you what I experienced and we're, we're figuring this out together. So definitely true. So I'm happy that they're writing this article. What might cause it? Those of us who are naturally more anxious or who have been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder may be more likely to feel uneasy at sunset. A 2022 study found that for people less prone to worry, anxiety peaked in the morning and slowly declined. Now, this is interesting. My anxiety is the best in the morning. When I, as soon as I wake up, I can feel like I can almost do anything. And then as the, as the day goes, it get, I get worse and worse until I'm, you know, stuck in bed and I can't, can't do anything. No, not really anymore, but that's what it was like. Again, as is similar as I was talking about with the four o'clock thing, just get worse and worse and worse. But participants with high worry levels experience sustained anxiety throughout the day. It's interesting. So for me, it's not sustained. It was quite low in the morning. Like that's when I would do my best exposure. If I had to drive somewhere or do something, I could do it in the morning. But as soon as it got past, like, 10 was too late now, I couldn't do it. I was too anxious. And then through the day, it get worse and worse and worse. If you ask me to do something at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m., no, nothing, nothing's going to happen. And then until bedtime, and then I would have nocturnal panic attacks. <laughs> so that wasn't fun. Well, that'll be another video. Nocturnal panic attacks will be a whole video in itself. And let me know in the comments, yeah. Should I do a nocturnal panic attack video? So... New research also suggests your personal body clock may have something to do with it. Evening types, night owls, are more likely than morning people to experience nervousness and racing ports from the afternoon onwards. Again, yeah, a little bit different to me because I, I think I'm a morning person, but I still get worse as the day goes. Symptoms tend to be more severe in the afternoon or evening. Yeah, that's true for me, yeah. So people, for people with anxiety disorders, symptoms tend to be more severe in the afternoon or evening. That's very true for me. Besides the propensity for worry, a lot of things could be at play here. The roots of your uneasiness will depend on how exactly you're feeling. When clients say they're anxious, I'm always like, well, what flavor? Personally, my sunset anxiety tends to be the strongest when I work from home, especially when I'm still in my pajamas at 6 p.m. So I, 100%, ever since I got Caesar, my dog, Caesar, that I'm sure you all know and love. This has been, as well, so much better for me. I get up, maybe seven or eight, and usually, I'm very busy right now, but usually the very first thing I do is take him outside and walk. Right now, I'm filming this video at eight, and then after I finish filming this in a few minutes, me and Caesar are going on our walk. And when I do that, the whole day is better. Maybe it's because I'm getting more sunlight earlier. Maybe it's because I'm just, you know, it's just a way to freshen the mind. I don't know. But when I walk him nice and early, the whole day is better. And also what happens is when it gets to the evening and it starts getting dark, I want to stay inside and I want to like curl up and stay inside and not do anything else. If I do that, then I just feel terrible. But if I say, okay, I need to go walk Caesar for his evening walk, despite how like ugh, eerie and terrible it feels, I will feel better when I get back. I will feel better from doing it. I've even been dizzy and feeling like I'm going to faint or die. And I've said, you know what, I have to do this for my dog. And I'd walk him and I'd get back and I'd be like, I, I did not think there was anything that would help me to feel better. How did that happen? And just from going and taking him for a walk, even when it's dark and I feel uneasy, I feel more anxious. So doing stuff when you feel anxious, I'm going to say this in every video I do. When you feel, oh, I should stay inside, I'm anxious. When you create these rules for yourself, don't listen to them. Go outside and do it. You have to chase the anxiety. This has become my mantra. I'm, I'm not trying to not feel anxious. And I know we're doing all these, oh, how can we help? Well, I want you to go and feel anxious and, and, and chase the anxiety and like it because that's what's been helping me. Let's see, how to deal with anxiety around sunset. Combating icky feelings, that's a good way to describe it, icky feelings at sundown will depend on what's causing them in the first place. 
If you think a lack of human connection, movement or time outside might be partially to blame, for example, try to schedule that into your day as form self-care. Yeah, I, d I think I said, yeah, definitely. I consider it like taking a vitamin or going to the gym, stuff that's hard to do in the moment, but good in the long run. Dr. Kisson says, it may be a matter of recognizing what's important to you, a nature walk, dinner, with a friend, satisfying lunch, I don't know. And forcing yourself to do it in the same way you do to fit, yeah, that 100%, forcing, but kind of forcing yourself to do it in the same way you say, okay, I made an agreement, I'm going to go, I made an appointment, I'm going to, you just need to say, okay, I made an appointment with myself to go on a walk this evening, even when it's dark and I don't feel good, and I'm going to stick to it, and you will feel better for doing that, you feel more accomplished, and you feel more confident that you can do things, even when you feel anxious, and that anxiety will not be as scary for you. Mindfulness, I have not been meditating and I've been so busy and I've been like, oh, I'm so busy, I can't meditate. But then I found myself at times where I just had to turn off everything, not even play a video game, nothing. And five minutes of doing that would help me, right? And I know how important meditation is and it's like a muscle that you build. It's not going to just cure you in one second, but it's a muscle and it helps you to better manage when you are in stressful moments, or it helps you to have an overall less stress level. And I'm neglecting to do that. And I think what I'm gonna do, I promise you guys, is I'm gonna set time in my calendar to practice mindfulness every single day. And I challenge you to do that with me. Having a routine around sunset can also ward off anxiety and give you a sense of purpose. I'm mindful building a nighttime habit so my mind knows that the workday is over. I, I I agree with this as well. So definitely creating schedules, creating routines to have. It's kind of like what I have with me and Caesar. He's my biggest routine and it really helps. That means like having a routine and setting free time in the routine. You, you see what I mean? So create those routines. And I'll admit again, I'm not the best at it. I will make a routine and I sometimes will get out of it. But I have kind of an overall routine that I do stick to. I go to sleep at a certain time and I wake up usually, I'm trying to move it to six, waking up at six o'clock, but just because I want to get more done, I want to do more, I want to have more time for myself, and I'm trying to sleep earlier too, but yeah, sticking to a routine I think is a massive, is a massive thing that is very, very important. I've learned that an evening workout does, I hate evening work, I can't do that. <laughs> I, I, if I'm going to work out, it needs to be in the morning. That's usually I'll take Caesar to the park and I'll do lots of push-ups and running, sprinting, different kinds of exercise. And I've recently, I'll probably do some videos of this, I've started doing kickboxing again. I used to do Muay Thai when I was much younger and I stopped when I started having quite, when I started having panic attacks and health anxiety. And now I'm picking that back up. So I might do a little series or journey on that. We'll see. I'm going to finish the video with this article. There's some interesting points in there. I'll put the link to this article in the, in the description. But let me know in the comments, what things help you with your sunset or seasonal anxiety? Are there any trips? Do you take any supplements? Things like that. And, and let me know. Please let me know if you like this video. I need to know that because I'm going to do one of these at least once a week. And I want to know that they're useful and I want to know that you get something out of it. Even if I'm just rambling, I've done a couple recently. I'm going to just cover topics as they come up. As things happen in my life, as they come up, I'm going to share with you what's helping me. And it's just more of a chat rather than a structured YouTube video like all these amazing YouTubers that I wish I could, that I could make such quality videos like that. So please let me know. I need, I need to know so I keep doing it. And yeah, this was a good article, pretty interesting. I had loads more that I was gonna read, but <laughs> just even getting through this one took ages. So thanks everyone for, for being here. Thanks for subscribing. If you've watched my videos, even once, please subscribe because there's gonna be a lot more coming and I think you're gonna like it. And yeah, thanks everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful day and good luck with the clock changes. Good luck with the getting dark earlier. I hope we've built some conversation and some some good strategies of what we can do. And yeah, I'll see you next time.